Hi there, my name's Nigel and welcome back to Valve Camp. Uh, today we're shooting from a secure location inside the COVID-19 environment. Uh, I'm going to show you today the F783 control top as mounted on a 272S actuator here. There's a reason to show you the uh, linear um, one in particular because when you buy one of these out of the box, they're set up for quarter turn. The last testing stage that goes through our controls area is setting this up for quarter turn. So we have to do a little bit of conversion for it uh, to convert it to uh, linear sensors. Remove the cap. We've already cleared it with our control area that we're okay to operate this. If I cycle this, indicators change, indicators change, valve operates. So we have to knock the air off first before we do any more. Now to remove the electrics from this model, it's got a PG16 cable gland adapter in here that goes to the PG9 cable gland. Uh, the reason we use PG16 is because this power plug here fits through that hole. So uh, we'll remove, first of all we'll slacken the cable gland and then remove the adapter. Just have to slacken the cable gland, lock off a couple of turns and then the adapter will come out. Take off the high-vis unit while I'm at it, make it a bit easier to get out. Takes a little bit of wiggling, but it does fit out. So there's the plug. That could be now bagged up and covered up and taped up and left. Sitting safe where it's not gonna hurt anyone. And we're ready to take off the control top. Need to remove some hoses and then 5mm Allen key, take the extended bolts out and lift. There's our control top. I've left this gasket in place. Uh, if we were servicing a explosive area one, ICEX or EXI, intrinsically safe one, we'd have to replace all gaskets. Okay, so we'll do that. And here's our replacement top. Now notice, it doesn't come with a target, okay? You have to make sure you've got the target ordered. In this case, it fits, it's in place, we'll leave it there. If you do have to change out the target, that's simply an Allen key. Don't use a spanner on it, there's a hex cut in the top. You can unscrew the target like so. Setting up our new control top. We have two air galleries here, and the O-rings seal onto the top of this, this actuator. If it was a quarter turn actuator, the air would go through there into the actuator. With the 272S linear actuators, they're externally ported, that's what these hoses are for. So these need to be, O-rings need to be in place, and they'll close off against that surface. So here we have what we, we call the bag of parts that comes with the control top and it has a base gasket, a gland, and two O-rings. That's all that's needed. We've got, now got to work these O-rings into this gap. Make sure your fingers are nice and grease-free. If you lubricate this O-ring, you'll be here for half an hour. But if you do it dry, that O-ring will work its way in. It takes a few, takes a minute or so just to work it into that shape in here and get it to stay put. The other O-ring will sit in there. This is injection molded. Uh, when you place it on top of the actuator, it'll either fold up or it'll fold down. If it folds up, simply take it off and put it on the other way. As otherwise, if you leave it folded up, chances are you'll catch the gasket under the edge of the lip of the control top and it will leak water into there. And we want the indicators facing out this way. That means the O-rings are gonna be on this side and these are the two bolt holes into here. Two long bolts.
Now if this was a quarter turn, it'd just be a matter of turning it on and setting it up to be done. But because it's linear, we have to set the switch heights now to suit. Usually we set this switch here as being the open switch and that one the closed one. So I'll take the switch out, switch holder out and show you what's going on with it. This slide that adjusts the switch height will slide up and down and the switch has got two mounts, upper and lower. It's right now sitting in the lower mount. I'll pop that out and put it in the upper mount. So that the target area here is at the upper end and I'll just quickly raise that switch a little bit because it's going to have to be a little bit higher than that. And then refit that. There are three optional places to screw this. Put it back in the one it came from, which is the central one, so that switch is facing towards the target. And secure it in place. Now we won't tighten it all the way down because I do have to undo, uh, adjust this target up a little bit higher yet. And if I tighten all the way down, it'll crush an O-ring between the uh, underside of the, the, the target screw and the base and that'll lock it in place. That's our anti-vibration measure. So we'll just uh, leave it a little bit loose for now until I get the power on. Just temporarily run the power in from the top. As you can see, we have no indicators. I adjust the lower switch, it's in the closed position. We can put some air on about now. Operate the actuator and bring the upper switch up. And I think we'll find it's good practice to get so the switch is just above the target it tells you it's fully open and then lock that switch in place bring up the other switch now I've got the indications around the wrong way so I've got green showing it closed and red showing it open. So we just have to switch those around here. Route this cable back through. So now we insert the cable connector through the PG16 thread and refit the PG16 adapter. All right, nip that down in place. And refit the gland. Now, connect the power. And what's important is routing these cables away from any moving parts inside here. That's what these little slots in the back of the uh, switch mounts are for fit the high-vis unit in place. Just drop that down. Right. Take the air out now. We don't need it for now. And just check the routing of these cables are clear of the threads of the control tap because the control cap threads will cut them. That's in place. Everything's working. Switches are right and we refit the cap. Refit the airline, fire it up, and inform the control room, we're back in business. 
just one thing I want to uh, show you. Um, sometimes you may need to do it in the field. You find a leak from one of these airs, the air inlet or the two uh, airlines down to the actuator. Just how to replace that O-ring or, or get in there to clean it out. You need to get in there with a screwdriver or flat blade or something. Uh, here we go, this one here. Lever it out, a little collet. Um, get in there with the O-ring pick and fish out the O-ring there, there he is. Uh, they come in a set of four. Um, you buy an O-ring re uh, replacement kit, a set of four of those. Simply a matter of popping the collets out, putting the replacement O-ring in, dust off inside there, make sure it's all nice and clean, tuck it in place, and then reset the collet. It's like that.